Welcome to AP Design Digital Tools. All right, I think we now know, have a basic understanding of the fundamentals in Rhino. There'll be other things that come up, but let's just start modeling. All right, so I think for our purposes, we're gonna use this house here uh, to get started. So we're just gonna take a quick tour. This is just in Art Daily uh, as of August 23rd. And then we can kind of see this really nice minimal uh, kind of existing limestone with this beautiful house archetype out of concrete. So it's a simple model um, that I think will just kind of help us get started. So uh, the the few things that I I'll put post on the on the website is, is I'll give you this image here and that image there and we'll be referencing the pictures also so let's just get started so because I, I assume that you know you might start with a sketch or start with a hard line drawing when you're modeling when you're first designing so these things are somewhat apropos and very rarely do you kind of start with a blank canvas and have complete a complete thought that you then model. Usually there's a few sketches involved before you get started. Alright, I'm going to just tweak a few things while I'm talking to you. I'm going to turn the uh, background color to white and I'm going to go ahead and turn off my grid. Um, all active viewports, I'm going to show grid so now. I'm going to go ahead and keep this axis thing here so I at least know which which direction is uh, Y, which is green, X is red. Alright, so um, I think the first thing we should do is we should uh, look at the images and get a sense, well, actually let's just bring them into our, our view. So I'm going to go to the top view and I'm going to use, oh, let me get out of the grid. Picture frame is the command I'm going to be using. And let's go and find that. Okay, so we want the plans. And we'll go ahead and just kind of guesstimate their size. So now we have the plans in here. And you can see right here we have 0 to 1, which is 1 meter. So I'm going to create a line that starts right here and goes 1 uh, meter. Let's see, how can I do that? One, I don't know if this will work. Uh, actually, it looks like it did. Okay, 1 meter, and so I'll just have it draw that. And then I'm going to... Uh, type in that command again oh, or now I'm going to grab that object and I'm going to scale it so the origin point let me turn on my O snaps so it snaps to that point the origin point will be there and then I'm going to give the second point kind of at the end of one meter and then grow this until it snaps to there so roughly, now we have a decent scale of the house itself. And then, let's see, that is top view. So let's go into the front view. And in this view, I will do the picture frame again. And I'll put in the section elevation information. So this guy right here. And again, we'll just and make it some arbitrary and somewhere I have a line that's one meter there it is and I'll go ahead and move that and turn off ortho so I can snap that right there and I'll just scale the same way I did before that if you hold down the shift key it 
creates a temporary uh, ortho. So you can see that since I have the shift, the snapping to the ortho. So I can do that, and then pick that point, and then have it scale up. All right, so now I should have these uh, in the right scale. I may still have to move them around. So let's go back to the top view, and let's look at what we have here. So here is the outside a kind of limestone wall. So let's just go ahead and draw it. So let's use a polyline and let's just start as accurately as possible. Now I realize that this looked extremely... Now I'm holding down the shift key on a few of these so that was a perfectly straight line, I know that. And I'm holding there and there. And then this interior looks like it isn't straight it's only straight kind of down these these uh, these this wall here and that wall there looks like it's straight but everything else is a little bit cocked so again just going through roughly at a slightly better resolution drawing might be even more accurate. Looks like I might have wanted to make that another point in here. No worries. What you can do is you can select that curve and we can go ahead and edit and I can what each of these points that I created was a control point. So now I'm gonna go to the control points under edit. And I'm going to um, I'm going to insert a control point. So now it's asking me, okay, it's snapping the center. So I actually probably want to disable. And I'm going to click on a point that's close. Okay. Now you can't see it, but there is now should be a control point there to see them. What you can do is go and click on these edit points. You can also just type in PON and it will create, you can see now these vertices, these control points. Okay, it looks like I didn't do what I thought I was going to do, so I'm going to try it one more time. Insert control point. It looks like I'm inserting it on the on the picture itself, not this guy. So that's a problem. What I'm going to do is going to turn these on and go to near. I'm hoping that all right now it's going to allow me to kind of throw in a point and hit enter, and now it's there. So now if I grab that point and move it. It's part of that polyline. Pretty cool. All right, so that is the uh, baseline drawing of that. And I'm going to pause the movie. I'm going to create all the rest of this stuff. All right, I'm right in the middle of making this thing, and I thought it would be a good time to talk about another one of these magic uh, tools. All right, so I'm, I'm making this kind of eye form. Now here, I am guessing that it actually is, this is a perfect form. So how far the leg goes out here is how far it goes here. Well, you can see I'm, I'm having a hard time drawing that. But what I want you to do is turn on Smart Track. And what Smart Track is going to do is it should allow me to kind of remember. Um, points that I've already made. For some reason it's not snapping to that. What I'm going to do is I, I went ahead and finished that polyline. I just hit return in the middle of it. I'm going to start a new polyline right here. 
And with Smart Track on, I can go ahead and hover over that. It kind of locks in. And you can see it's still like blue. And now I'm going to draw a line that's essentially exactly the same distance. So it's actually pretty cool. And I'll do the same here. And there, see it's kind of getting to know what I'm intending to do. And snapping, essentially um, being smart. All right, so now I have two polylines that are separated. Now, as long as they actually have one point in common, which they should, right down here and there. I can do what's called a join. I think the join's under edit. You can do it there, or I can just type in join. Once you get to know the commands, you can just start typing, and eventually it kind of even gets smart and knows that that's the one you want. So now if I select it, you can see that's all one big polyline. All right, let's do a couple extrudes and then we'll we'll end this video and move on to another one. All right, so let's go to perspective mode so we can kind of see the magic. All right, so we have those two things. Uh, I have them on concrete layer. I probably should actually make a stone layer. And let's go ahead and give it a kind of a, a dirty gray, maybe give it a little bit of different color so just I can see it visually that there's something going on. Alright, so that's my stone and I'll go ahead and grab it in here. Make sure that it has something. Okay. And I'm going to do solid extrude because this is going to be a solid thing. Now I'm not sure how much to go up, so this may be a good time for me to move uh, this thing in the proper location. So to do that, I'll go to front, and I'll move this down until it passes through. I'm doing is drawing a line. It looks like I'm pretty close to that line. Okay, that's getting close. Now I might want to move this over so they have something in common. So I'm using my eye and okay, that looks pretty close. It looks like I could scale this slightly. And that's going to be uh, it's going to be a little hard to do. But I use a little bit of magic. There we go. All right. All right, so now we're we got those things two things in kind of in common. And I can see, if I you do the extrude, I'll see if it's visually accurate. So it's snapping to something right now in the background. So 8.8 .8 feet. That's probably pretty close. We'll go 8.75 just so we have something to base it on. And it looks like we're almost there. All right, so before I end this movie, I'll use one more command that I think is rather magical. All right, so we have this this pretty good uh, solid wall. What I'm going to do is use what's called move face. I don't really remember where that is coming from. Sorry for the cat in the background, but oh well. Faces. All right, so move faces. So under solid edit tools, I'm going to move face. Many Rhino users don't even know about this command. This is this is the magic stuff, right? This is stuff that's hidden. 
That is awesome. I will see if I get it right. I'm going to move it up four inches. Or it looks like more like six inches. Maybe five inches. Okay, that's perfect. Voila. Okay, so even here, say I wanted to make that wall a little bit longer. If I hit enter again, it just uses the last command that I use. You can see that it's letting me uh, grab multiple faces. Uh, that's up to you whether you need that or not. But I'm going to assume no. So now we have the beginnings of that house. Alright, great.